Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the Lucid Dreaming Podcast. My name is Jay. I write at lucidsage.com, and I decided to create a podcast because I was looking for one and couldn't find one. I thought this might be a good idea and another avenue in which to talk about, discuss lucid dreaming, learn lucid dreaming, and explore it. So I wanted to sort of set the stage about this podcast. First and foremost, I am not a lucid dreaming expert. I have a lot of experience. I have a passion for it, no doubt. But I I am by no means an expert or an authority. And this podcast, as well as my blog, is nothing but an experiment, an exploration of lucid dreaming of techniques, of methods, of the philosophy of it, uh, and all other aspects such as that. And I think that what I want to do with the podcast is a continuation of that, just uh, really um, exploring this together, if you will. And if you want to join me on this journey, I think it'd be very interesting and it might be fun. And so the other thing about doing a podcast is I am not a professional speaker or a professional audio producer or have any such experience in creating a podcast. I have done various things of uh, teaching online, created videos of sorts, and I am a little versed at, at some of these things, and I'm definitely a technical guy. In fact, my my living I make as a coder, a programmer, and I build websites and many other things. So I'm, a, I'm more on the tech nerd kind of side, but I think lucid dreaming is one of my biggest passions. And so I'm trying to merge the two and see how it goes. So again, I'm probably going to sound very, very amateurish in terms of uh, radio broadcasting. You'll hear me go, mm and um, and I'll probably pause a lot and, um, this won't sound the most professional thing at the beginning, but hopefully as things go on and if this goes well and I find it fun and interesting to continue and if uh, if it builds an audience or if people are interested in, in even hearing me blabber about uh, lucid dreaming, then hopefully I'll, I'll get better as I go. But I just wanted to sort of say in advance that this is this by, by no means is a, a super professional kind of thing again it's, it's it's an experiment it's a test and i think it might work out so bear with me as i improve my skill of broadcasting my voice so i i do want to say a little more about what my my hopes and my plans are for this podcast i think it's very very difficult to do a podcast alone in fact uh, that's why i think most podcasts about any subject are one with multiple people or one main person that does, you know, always uh, is always interviewing somebody. I've only heard two podcasts so far that are done by one person alone that have worked well and I've that I've enjoyed. And I, one of them is every episode is no longer than fifteen minutes. So again, you see, you can see how challenging that might be. So I definitely do want and hope if this again if this continues to have people on the podcast and, and talk to some interesting people, some lucid dreaming teachers, uh, some experienced folks. I, I think the fascinating thing about lucid dreaming these days is that it's, it's finally sort of coming to the surface and a lot more people are interested in it. But, you know, shy of Stephen LeBurge or LeBurg, however you pronounce his name, and I'm sure it will come up many times, so I will look it up how to pronounce him. Um, you know, except from him, there isn't really a major figure in lucid dreaming. There are some some really good writers. There's some really good books out there. Uh, there are some inter- interesting folks uh, doing some teachings online. You know, every hobbyist uh, like myself, and I do consider myself a hobbyist in this, finds himself uh, compelled to write, which is why I have a blog that's, you know, still it's in its infancy with with very few blog posts for now. But I think we're all sort of in this together. We're all just exploring and trying to perfect our skill in lucid dreaming and trying to get better at it. Um, there are 
fantastic communities online. There are forums. There is a lucid dreaming subreddit. Uh, there are a group of people on Twitter uh, constantly talking and sharing information. There's obviously, you know, little books and eBooks and courses and methods. And obviously gadgets are, are really exploding right now. And we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that as well. And I think it's amazing. I think so many people, just all of us together, are just trying to figure this out and, and make it better and make it more accessible and learn more about it, how to do it. And I think there's something in everyone's, except for maybe, you know, natural born lucid dreamers, people, if they, if they do exist, they're the rare people who are just sort of born with this natural ability sometimes whether they like it or not, to, to lucid dream, everybody else is just really want to, to figure out how to more easily do it and then help others do it as well. I think that's, that's almost universal from, from what I've seen so far. And so this is, this is my piece of it. This is my part in, in participation in that sort of connected effort that we're all engaged in. So that's, that's the podcast. That's the experiment. And this, this is what I hope to do. Uh, I'm sure I'll talk about everything from techniques and methods to gadgets and Kickstarter and masks and, you know, the history of lucid dreaming and the future of lucid dreaming. Probably we'll have some, some interesting folks on the podcast, I hope, and even talk about the philosophy behind lucid dreaming. I think that if you dive deep enough into it, you, you sooner or later stumble upon the sort of fascinating aspect that's, uh, that's really hard to, to, to put into words uh, because it's such a, such a strange experience, this sort of uh, virtual reality world in your mind. So we'll, we'll explore that as well. So these are the future plans for the podcast. And I guess I'll start the first episode officially with an actual subject to talk about something uh, and not just talk about the podcast in, in a meta kind of way. So I think the first thing to talk about, and again, if this, this podcast is not aimed at any particular sort of level of experience, I'm going to talk about stuff that's for beginners, and I'm going to discuss some things probably that are only going to make sense to people who have done this uh, for a while or have had a lot of experience in, in lucid dreaming. But I think the basics are very, very important, even for people who have done it for a while. And that's why I wanted to talk about this, this first thing that I always, always start from when people ask me. Um, once, they, once they have heard of lucid dreaming or um, finally kind of accept or, or believe that it's possible, um, they ask me how how to do it, and this is the first thing I mention. And I, I want to put it this way, and I, I've written a little about this before, is that if um, if I could only do one thing, if you tell me from all the techniques and methods and gadgets and, and, and things you can do to achieve lucid dreaming, to achieve lucidity, what if you could only do one thing, what would that be? And that absolutely without blinking, is writing and recording a dream journal. And here's why. First of all, most people, there's a lot of people at least, that don't recall their dreams very well. In fact, some of them, some people don't think they dream at all until they start looking into it and discover that they just don't remember their dreams. And, it, and it's hard to imagine when you feel like you never dream because you forget that you you forget that you dreamt altogether, not just what you dreamt. You don't just remember that you dreamt something, but don't remember what it is. You don't even remember that you were dreaming. And that's the kind of trick. That's why people think that they don't dream. And so a lot of people think that they, they've, they've never dreamed for years, at least, or something like that. And there's many things that affect that. But for the most part, no interest in, your, in the content of your dream um, has a tendency to, to over time create that sort of experience of, of having no recollections of dreams. And I'm going to go through why I think a dream journal is, um, 
is extremely helpful and it is, even is the, the basis of, of a lucid dreaming practice, in my opinion, at least. And I'm, I'm going to go into why I think that works as well. So when people don't remember their dreams, the first thing that people say is, make the intention to remember your dreams. Say that you're going to remember it, put a note and um, a notepad and a pen next to your bed and plan on waking. When you wake up in the middle of the night or first thing in the morning, try to write anything. And this brings your intention and your attention into your dreams sets your mind to try to pick up something. And if you really, if you remember to try to remember first thing in the morning, then you might just get a glimpse of something. And even if you don't the first night or second night and so on, sooner or later, guaranteed, unless you, uh, unless there is some particular issue or who knows, a chemical imbalance or something like that. I've never heard of a case until uh, yet of someone who, set the intention to remember their dreams and to record their dreams in particular and has not succeeded. So if that happened to you, let me know. But I've, I have yet to hear about that. So that's why I think it's, it's very powerful. And if you set that intention and you plan on writing it, then you'll start remembering something. And when you write that down, the next time you'll remember a little more if you keep the intention. And I think that the most important thing, the, most, the thing that makes this the most successful is consistency. If you consistently make an effort to write your dreams every day, the benefit and the result is tremendous. So when you when you remember a little bit more of your dreams, what happens is is that sort of just your your conscious awareness starts paying attention to your dreams. Now of course it always happens after the fact, it is when you wake up in the morning that you consciously think back about your dreams and try to remember details. And in fact, if and then try to see if this is the same in your experience, but in my experience, uh, even daily these days, when I try to remember the content of my dreams or try to, to write them down or record them in the morning, I, the last thing I remember is the last dream I've had or the last moment before I woke up. And when I write that down, I end up writing my dreams backwards pretty much because as soon as I write some information, my brain pays attention to the details and suddenly remembers what happened before. And then I write that and I, you know, try to think about that. And suddenly another thing hits me that I totally forgot until the moment before is the dream before or the sequence or scene before that one. And so I find myself ending, ending up writing my dreams sort of backwards, either in scenes or individual dreams. I don't know if this is your experience, but in my experience, I, I just feel which one was a different dream. I, I, I have a sense of this was one separate dream and then this memory is, a, is another dream. I'm not sure why or how, I'm not sure how accurate that is, but it's definitely a sense I get. And at the end of the writing session, when I write my dreams in the morning, I find myself, you know, easily uh, distinguishing which dream is which. And I, I start from the last one and I number them up because the last one is really the first and, and it goes up from there. And the, the first one I wrote is the last dream I've had. And that's an interesting experience. We sort of... Um, Remember it backwards. But here's the interesting thing. The more conscious attention and conscious awareness that we put towards the dream state, and the dream phase, the cycle and sleep in which we dream, the more conscious awareness we bring to that moment. We bring it sort of backwards into that moment. And it starts from not remembering anything, being completely detached to it, to slowly but surely creeping backwards until sort of the times collide, until your conscious awareness pays attention to your dreams while they're happening. And that's when lucidity comes up. I think that's in some weird way, it's sort of a meeting of your subconscious or your unconscious mental process or whatever actually goes on while you're dreaming and your conscious awareness sort of 
meeting at some point finally. And something ignites back your conscious awareness, which you can only start trying to to bring to your dreams after they're done it, while you're awake, while your conscious awareness is going on during the day, which is for most people, the only time that they're, um, they, they get, they gain control of their conscious awareness is, is when it happens automatically when they wake up in the morning and they, they become aware of that, they become conscious and then they sort of lose it when they go to sleep and the dream happens and you might remember it and you might not, but there is no conscious awareness during that. There is awareness, but you're not, you're not aware of your awareness. There's no self-awareness in the conscious kind of sense. But as you bring your conscious awareness attention towards the dream state where you don't have this awareness, it slowly but surely uh, starts filling it until something sort of snaps and, and you become aware of your, of your dream while it's happening. And I think it sort of hit me that a dream journal is one of the most powerful techniques for that is because the more you write, the more recollection of dreams that you have. And the more recollection and awareness of dreams that you have, the more of them you remember, um, meaning the more dreams you remember and the more of each dream you remember. And this has a lot of benefits. One, you get to have more awareness of your dreams and better memory. Uh, two, or later on for you know dream signs and reality checks, and we'll, we'll get to that, of course, um, you'll have more material for it. You can read through your dreams and find sort of repeating components that you can later use as dream signs. And the more you remember, the more you, the more sort of data you have to go through and, and work with. And the more you continue to write, you, you get a, a much wider, much larger sort of understanding and familiarity with your dreams. You, get a better chance to recognize the dream itself as the dream state and, and that something is off. And in fact, I think this, this clicked the most when I ended up talking to my mother a, a long time ago. And of course, this was when my interest in lucid dreaming grew. Eventually, one of our conversations ended up on lucid dreaming. And I was sort of trying to explain it to her and tell her about lucid dream. And she said, I think this is happening to me all the time. I said, what do you mean? Uh, you're, you're lucid dreaming? You're, have you ever tried it on purpose? She's like, no, this just happens to me um, almost every night. I said, how is this, how is this possible? I, I work so hard to, to try to make it happen. And you're saying it happens to you every night. Are you sure you know what you mean? Are you sure you're actually aware that you're dreaming while you're dreaming? Or you, maybe we're misunderstanding each other because it's such a, a tricky subject. Um, and it turns out that what happens is that during her study, and she was a, uh, uh, a kindergarten teacher, and so in her study, they, they were learning uh, about uh, different aspects of, of psychology of children, but in psychology in general. And of course, they were learning about dreams and dream interpretation, and other things around that. And one of their, I think, sort of um, exercises is to is to start a dream journal and at some point she started writing a dream journal and she was always fascinated by her dreams and she just continued that practice she just decided to continue writing her dreams just just for the sake of understanding them better and because it was fun to her it was it was you know interesting and entertaining it was a, a hobby to write her dreams and over the years she just continued to do it she never did any lucid dreaming practice she never even knew about lucid dreaming all she's done is write her dreams down when she woke up in the middle of the night and when she woke up in the morning. And over time, her dreams became more vivid, longer, more expressive, more, more clear. And she eventually started achieving lucidity naturally just by bringing so much conscious awareness and conscious attention to the content of her dreams. And after several years of doing this consistently, I mean, and I mean consistently, she was, she was persistent and she has piles of books about lucid, uh, about, about her dreams. Um, she just naturally started lucid dreaming and just on a regular basis started becoming aware 
of her dreams while she's dreaming. And a, a lucidity just, just naturally started occurring on a regular basis. And I thought that was fascinating. When I heard that, I knew that no matter what other techniques I'm doing, what other attempts I'm, I'm trying, the, the thing I need to do the most consistently is write and record my dreams. And it's not easy. It's not easy for everyone um, to do that. Sometimes the, uh, the nature of your, your own sort of uh, habits, uh, whether you're a morning person or not, whether you have time in the morning to, to write, to write down your dreams. Some people just are too fuzzy to actually write it down. So they rather record it as a, with a voice recorder. Um, but maybe you're sleeping next to someone, so you can't record it because you'll wake them up or you have kids and they, you know, they jump up and wake you up and you have to take care of them and poof, your dream is gone. So this is a, a tricky one and it's not always easy, but there are different ways to go about it. And depending on your situation, there are, a different method for writing or recording your dreams that might work better for you. And I think it's worth the effort when you can do it. Of course, if it's, if it's just too complicated or too impossible for, for whatever reason, um, then maybe that's not something you can do on a regular basis or, or, or consistently. But I think that most people can find some, some way to do it. Uh, all it takes is, is waking up and, and wanting to write down even just a little bit, even just a, a sentence or two, uh, a little synopsis of, of your dream. And I think that can be very powerful when done consistently. So I want to encourage anyone exploring, trying lucid dreaming, whether a beginner or an expert, um, to write, to, to write or record their dreams. Now I'm looking into switching from writing my dreams down with a pen to doing a uh, voice recording. Just recording voice because it's it's easier. I can do it faster. Uh, I don't know if it's as efficient. I, I don't. I, if, I wonder if writing down your dreams uh, with a pen and paper has a different impact to it. It's it's like people have told me in the past that writing things down um, helps memory, not just because you're writing it down and you you can come back to it and and, and find it, but something about the process of writing down. Um, ingrains it further in our memory. It's another expression of whatever we think about that we're writing down that etches it in our memory. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm, I'm exploring, I'm, I'm testing a new way. And I think the benefit of voice recording too is that now, you know, with my iPhone, there is the whether built in into the note taking app or into one of the dream journal apps like uh, Dreamboard, which is free and I, I like it, you can um, dictate your voice into text. So you're not only uh, recording your voice if the app allows you to do it, uh, but at the very least you're transcribing. Now transcription is still not perfect, but some of these apps are, are getting really much, much better at it. And this allows you to digitally record your, your dreams as opposed to if you just write it down and you have to flip through the book and find something, you can't just search for it. And this also uh, allows you to keep a, a written record. So it's not just voice where you have to go back and listen to it. So I find this interesting and I'm, I'm exploring to see how well that works. I find it a little easier to voice record it just because, again, we, I can do it much faster. But um, I wonder what other people's experience with this is. This is, a, this is a, an, an interesting approach. And I think that both voice recording and automatically transcribing it into text can have tremendous benefits, especially again, to look into dream signs later, to have it be searchable, uh, digitally recorded where, you know, you can have a backup of it and, and so on. So I think that's about it for, for the first episode and the first subject I, I decided to, to bring up. I think this is always a good opener. Now, if you have any thoughts, suggestion, feedback, uh, or if you want to get in touch with me for any reason, um, you can email me at contact at lucidsage.com or find me on Twitter at the lucid sage. And let's see where this goes. I hope you enjoy the podcast. And um, I'm, I'm not planning to do it on a very particular or regular basis quite yet. But if I get into the groove, 
And if people enjoy it and if I enjoy it, then I hope this becomes a regular thing and, and continues further. Thank you.